Huh. I'm surprised you even clicked on this video. You did another video about the infamous fidget spinners. Now I know you're probably sick of hearing talk about this trend that seems to be invading our local schools, restaurants, streets, and YouTube videos. But I want to briefly mention them in this video because I realized something kind of interesting lately. But I also want to give my opinions on these little toys and how I think they affect our brains because I'm a huge nerd and I like taking the completely neutral route to talk about science. science. So consider this short little video a filler video before I return to uploading my usual content. This video is just for fun. So a few days ago, I went to the 7-Eleven and I saw they were selling a fidget spinner for $5. I thought, hey, this toy has been popular for the last couple months now, perhaps I'll buy one. But then the guy behind the counter said, I turned to him and he said, Yeah, I have some of the good shit. Those fidget spinners over there, they're plastic, they break easy, no good. I know you're one of the youngsters and you want a good fidget spinner, am I right? I told him I kind of wanted the blue one over there, but somehow he convinced me to buy the one he was hiding behind the counter. I left the store feeling kind of uneasy because I'm not sure if I was ripped off or if I was doing this guy a favor, considering the fact that he literally begged me to buy it. And I'm looking at it and I think this is just an ordinary fidget spinner, right? Not like there's anything wrong with it. In fact, it seems like an improvement from the plastic, but no. Something was really odd with this particular fidget spinner. Cause uh, how do I explain this without sounding like a complete fucking lunatic? Okay, um. Have you ever seen Toy Story? Um, well, this fidget spinner is very special. I was starting to notice the patterns the day I bought it. The first night, it went missing when I put it on the counter, and I found it later sitting in the bathroom. But one day, our car went missing, and we found the car in the restaurant, across the street, in the driver's seat, was my black fidget spinner. But that wasn't even the weirdest thing to happen. In fact, things got really weird since lately a... A reoccurring pattern has been happening where... Every single night, when the clock strikes midnight, the case will open slowly, and he will climb out of his little case, walk onto my bed, and whisper things in my ear. Disturbing thoughts, horrible things, saying if I ever try to sell him or throw him away or touch another fidget spinner, his gang of very colorful spinner devices will come to my house and stab me at night. It's kind of an abusive relationship, but we get along pretty well during the day, so I'd say- Please help me. So I'd say I've been enjoying it so far. His name is Joe, by the way. Joe the Fidget Spinner. Say hi, Joe, you fucking monster. Anyway, I apologize for that tangent. I guess I'm still getting used to living with a talking fidget spinner. <laughs> Seriously, please help me. It's holding me up. Try that again and I'll fucking kill me. The topic for this video is addictions and how they relate to fidget spinners. If you see my video about internet addiction, you'll know I have a really bad addiction to Twitter, Discord, and a few other social medias. Well, one day I was checking my phone, scrolling through Twitter like I usually do, and I took out a fidget spinner, I spun it for a while, spun it about two more times, and then I realized, isn't this basically the same thing that some of us do every day on the internet? Think about it. Both are involved in the repetitive action of either scrolling or spinning. Both can be addictive, if done long enough, and both give a quick satisfying boost of dopamine each time you spin or scroll or like or retweet, repost, reply, watch a video, you, you know what I mean? This is basically what I do like every day. And now compare this to a fidget spinner. Are you kind of seeing it now? And they both have that sort of negative stigma as well, you know, like spinning a fidget spinner at the dinner table while people are trying to eat would be considered disrespectful. Similar to talking to someone at the dinner table while you're texting someone else in another country, while you're going out on a date with someone. That's kind of awkward. But there's also just the concept, just how simple a fidget spinner is compared to the complexity of an internet addiction. At their core, both of them are just addictions when looked at the most basic level of understanding. Spin, scroll, text. Some will play with their phones so long their hands start to hurt. Some will spin a fidget spinner so long their hands will go numb. Different device, similar concept. There have even been studies that some are being hypnotized by the spinning of a fidget spinner, you know, like hypnosis. Some say it calms them down, it distresses them, makes them forget about their daily lives. Now let's look at the internet. Some will go to the internet as a way to avoid their real life problems. Some would say it can distress to watch YouTube videos or, or check what's going on in their timeline. Like scrolling, like spinning, it's hypnotizing, it can be craved, you can be addicted to it. So which one is worse? The guy who can't stop spinning a fidget spinner or the guy who can't get off their phone? Well, that's actually more difficult to answer than you might think, because our generation has sort of become numb in a sense. It's almost as if they're basically the same thing. The same mind-numbing repetitive actions that give our brains little temporary happy points until we inevitably become sad without it. What some used to consider a powerful tool with unlimited amounts of information is now being questioned for its addictive nature in teens and adults, and could be compared to the same mind-numbing action that is spinning a fidget spinner, or stress toy, or playing clicky clicker all day, or playing 
dancing with a yo-yo. It's almost like society has become desensitized and numb to the concept of boredom these days or just simple pleasures of life like reading a book or taking a walk. Nowadays, our simplest cravings like turning on a device or taking out a toy in less than three seconds has slowly integrated in our society, since in theory, aren't they basically the same guilty pleasure at their very core, forcing us to ignore the struggles of our daily lives and become immersed in our animalistic impulses to crave something as vast as the internet so much that we've developed an addiction that can be compared to methamphetamine? The only difference is a fidget spinner is eventually going to be a dying trend. Doctors even say there likely won't be any long-term psychological side effects to using a fidget spinner, but the internet probably has a much longer lifespan, and it's changing the way our brains work around the world. And considering the lifespan of the internet, well, we might get some long-term side effects. Effects that may be passed down to our children, changing the way our brains work for many years to come. Now I know you're probably looking at me funny, you think all this is ridiculous, but I'm not gonna ignore that a fidget spinner and the internet aren't the same in certain aspects. For example, the difference between the internet and a fidget spinner is a fidget spinner doesn't have the satisfaction of interacting with other people from around the world or having a nearly unlimited amount of knowledge right at your fingertips. But even then, if you walk up to somebody spinning one, you'd probably be talking about fidget spinners for a bit or doing tricks with them, putting them on your nose, or trading them, or some shit like that. You, you'd kind of just be stuck on the same platform that something like Twitter gives you, bounded to your addiction and ignoring your stress and problems to play with a toy. And I know for a fact I see a lot of people talk about how much they hate Twitter, but they're on it all fucking day. And fun fact, neither of these things are supposed to be toys. The internet was created with the purpose of providing a vast amount of information for learning and research purposes, and the games and social platforms weren't intended to be as big as they are. And fidget spinners were developed as an attempt to aid people with anxiety, ADHD, and autism. But yet we're using them in a totally different way than they were intended to be used, and all of us have become so addicted to them like flies to a light source. Now I'm not saying fidget spinners are that bad, in fact stress balls or fidget spinners I can personally find to be very helpful and can take my mind off stuff. And the internet can be very helpful as well. I've made a lot of friends on the internet, saved me so much time when I had issues with school, and personally, I've enjoyed giving my fidget spinner a few spins once in a while if I'm bored or something. But there's no denying that addictions in today's society are becoming stronger. And it really makes you question the path that we're going. Will we all succumb to our urges, our impulses, our cravings, our addictions? Will we keep spinning and scrolling and texting? And if so, is this a good path for us to take? I'll leave you to come up with your own conclusion. Anyway, thank you for watching the video. Hopefully it wasn't too weird or anything. If there's any last words I want to say, it's that honestly, I love Twitter and I don't hate fidget spinners, but I think there's certainly a connection regarding them being addictive and I thought it was worth mentioning. If you liked this video, feel free to like the video and I might make more videos like this. Maybe subscribe or comment about your thoughts on fidget spinners or addictions to stuff. Do you have a guilty pleasure? Leave it down below. I'm going to return to regular content soon, but I thought this would be a fun filler video to make as I try to get back into uploading more videos. Once again, thank you for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. And as always, good vibes, everyone.